what's up guys? My name is Roy Dean Schneider, and I had the thought recently to film some first-person horseback riding lesson videos and share them online. So what I'm going to do is take you and put you on my head and go outside and ride my horse, Whiskey, who I'll tell you all about later on. And then I'm going to come back inside, chop up that footage in my computer, and beam it out to you so that you can... Uh, watch some lessons from the first person perspective even though you might be infinitely far away from me and infinitely far away from being able to ride any horses which a lot of people are they don't have access to horsemanship so I would love to share my horses with you guys so hopefully you'll enjoy it and have some fun checking out my horses all right Come boys! Alright guys, so with haltering a horse, the first thing you're going to want to do is get your rope halter situated and that means take the tail end of it, lay it over your arm just like that. You don't want to get any loops or twists because your arm could get cut, so that's why we don't want to carry any slack like this because if something would happen, that could pull tight and we could get our hands stuck in there. So all you want to do is fold it in half. And lay it over your arm just like that and it's, you're gonna do it the same way all the time every time as with a whole bunch of things in horsemanship uh, being repetitive makes sure that we get it done correctly um, we get it done safely and a lot of times there's just one like best practice as far as uh, how to do things and there's oftentimes different opinions in different ways but I'm just gonna show you how I was trained and how I teach other people so you start with the lead rope over your arm just like that you need this little eye eyelet in your left hand first and then you take the tail like that and put it on top I'm gonna ride whiskey I'm gonna let him finish getting a drink Okay, looks like he's done drinking. Hey, buddy. So, you want to walk around to the left side of the horse. You can touch him on the butt to let him know where you're at. You can walk right behind him. So, first thing we do is reach underneath with our left hand, reach over top with the right hand, grab the tail, bring it down. You can pull him towards you like this. Come on, bud. Good boy over the nose thank you sir for being so cooperative shimmy it all the way up center the piece by the throat 
and then keeping some tension on it, go through the eye around the back right side, keep it tight, and then through that loop, just like that. You're gonna tie it like that every single time because that way if he pulls back and this gets really tight, it's always easy to just come and loosen it up again. Now, if you tie this any other way, that's not usually the case. So you wanna take this tail, stick it in there like that. Good boy, buddy. I wish I had some treats. And then when you lead your horse, you keep the extra slack on the left-hand side, just like this, fold it over one time, and then you hold underneath about a foot or so from the horse. Here we go. Just like this. So this is leading your horse. Typically you're gonna be on the left side, although you can go on either side once you've got them haltered up. Um, lead them just like this. And when you stop, they should stop. You got a little close. I'll wiggle this to ask them to back up. Um, some horses are not trained to wiggle back up, but these guys are. So you go like that and they back right up. You can lead from the other side if you want to. Just have the rope like that. Grab on the same position. Oh boy. And this way, you've got a little distance between you and the horse. And if he starts wanting to step over me, I can just go like this. I can push him around this way. Or I can pull him back to me. Yeah. So there's a special knot that we tie every time. It's called a quick release knot. It's probably got another name, but I don't know what it is. But what you do, take your tail, go through the right hand side of your ring. And you wanna bring your horse by like so, I don't know, four feet or so, just enough so he can move around, but not enough um, so that he can step over this. There, when we're done, he'll probably have enough length to be able to nibble on some grass, which is fine with me. Um, while we're tacking up, but you don't want to have so much slack that he could uh, accidentally step over it and then get himself in a pickle. So, a little closer. Come on, buddy. There we go. In fact, we'll tie him a little shorter so he can't reach the ground so he'll pay attention more. So, on the right-hand side, with this backwards loop. And you pull through. Make the first one nice and tight. I like to go around the back of this first rope to make it a little more secure. You can go straight through like that but uh, I just like to make that first one a little more secure. And then from there, you just daisy chain it and you can tuck the tail in once you run out. But some horses are really, really clever and they'll chew on this stuff. And so if they get a hold of this, it just gets tightened up. Um, whereby if you just quit like that, some horses would grab onto that and untie themselves. So, when you run out of rope, stick the tail through. First thing we start with most often is called a curry comb. Um, this is my preferred tool for starting out. Um, it's great for getting mud and debris off, but as you can see, my pony's pretty clean, but when you use it, Scrape like so. You can brush pretty hard as long as you're on uh, their smoother, flatter surfaces. When you get to their knees and ankles and such, you wanna be a little more careful because it can irritate like their knuckles and stuff. But don't be afraid to push as hard as you need to to get the mud off. And also, if you have a lot of mud somewhere because they've been rolling, you can scrape it like this. You don't really wanna go against the hair because doesn't work very good. A little tiny scab came off. Um, but you can scrape like that if you've got a lot of mud. But since he's pretty clean, I'm just going to use what's called a hard brush, which is just uh, this bristly brush right here. So I like to start around the neck area. You're just going to go with the grow of the hair, front to back, top to bottom.
I like to keep one hand on the horse at all times. That gives me a little bit of stability. It lets me feel him and sort of feel his emotions. If he tenses up or if he spooks, um, I've got a hand on him at all times so I can push myself out of the way if need be. So there are a bunch of reasons for grooming horses. I'll try and remember all of them. I haven't taught a lesson in a while, but one is it's a nice way to say hi. So it's a great way to say hi to your horses before we go for a nice long ride. So it's just sort of a polite etiquette sort of thing. Um, yeah. Reason number two is um, I haven't ridden whiskey for a couple days, so when I pull him out of the pasture like I did, I want to give him a thorough checking over front to back, top to bottom, and make sure that he doesn't have any new nicks or scrapes or cuts or anything that, uh, that I should be concerned about as a horse owner um, or that anything that needs treating, like this little cut or uh, this little scab peeled off, that's totally fine. That happens all the time. I'm not worried about it. Um, he lives in a group with other horses and things get pretty rowdy, so I don't sweat the small stuff. Here's another little scab. Um, but things that you want to really watch out for are just anything more significant that would require some veterinary attention possibly or just home treatment. And then also you always want to take a look at their eyes. Um, most of their personality and communication comes from the eyes and the ears and the, the, the body movement also, but so you'll be paying close attention to that all the time. So to recap, reason number two is basic, basically an inspection. Um, so reason number three is um, I want my horse to be mm, somewhat clean so that it doesn't get my tack extra dirty. Um, I use a saddle pad underneath my uh, Western styled endurance saddle and that pad gets very dirty over time and I have to clean it occasionally. And so by having a clean horse, it helps uh, keep my equipment cleaner so I don't have to wash it as frequently. Um, so that's reason number three. Reason number four is if there is dirt or mud or cockleburrs um, stuck in his coat, um, anywhere where there's gonna be equipment, like I just use the pad and a uh, cinch most of the time but sometimes you'll have a breast collar on um, you might have saddlebags that stick out back here and you might have a rear cinch so basically anywhere my equipment is going to be I want to make sure that it's nice and clean because if there's a cockleburr or if there's a bunch of mud and then I put some equipment on top of it and it starts rubbing or the breast collar is rubbing or the cinch is rubbing um, it's going to cause problems um, for my horse and I don't want that to happen and then the final reason is it's all about style. You want to look good. Um, you don't want to look like a kook. Like I'm sort of weird and shredded up and sort of a character, but um, I'm not dirty and I don't want my horse to be dirty either. So always inspect your saddle pad especially if it's been a while since you've used it um, it's gonna look something like this this is starting to get caked up pretty good with uh, hair and a little bit of like sweat and and some dirt and stuff um, but it's not too bad yet but it's getting close to needing a cleaning but again like with the inspecting the horse for any cockleburrs or anything um, you want to inspect your pad because you'd hate to put this on and have something pokey or itchy under here or have some mud um, that's going to cause a sore on your horse's back. So the pad goes on just like this. I got to move this big thick mane forward a little bit. Um, the rule of thumb is you want to line down the front of the pad that extends down the leg. That's a rule of thumb. Um, and then of course centered it on the back from left to right. Um, this particular pad and saddle combination uh, tends to slide around a little bit so I just use this little uh, grippy pad to keep things from moving around. So then with the saddle um, you want to grab the front by your left hand here back with your right hand um, 
I leave my equipment hang down, but some people like to do a little sweep like this and then plop it up on there. Um, just like this, which is a great way to do it, but um, I just skip that step and I swing it behind like this and then ease it into position. And this pad fits my saddle pretty tight. So it's gonna be just like that. I'm gonna go ahead a little more. Then I'll step around to the other side. Inevitably, you're gonna have latigo strings caught up like that. That's fine. So this is a cinch keeper. I'm gonna let my cinch down. Um, another thing you wanna inspect is your cinch. Every single time you wanna inspect your cinch, I just comb through it with my fingers like this. Make sure there's nothing pokey or muddy. It's good to go. That's how it always looks. Um, this is a mohair cinch, which comes from alpacas, I think. Um, it's really strong, but it's got a, a little bit of stretch to it. Um, it. It lasts a really long time. It's basically um, one of the most preferred styles of cinches um, for horsemanship but you want to make sure it's real mohair you don't want nylon in fact this style of cinch with these strings in a nylon setup um, ends up being sort of dangerous it's definitely not worth it you want a high quality 100% um, real mohair cinch if you're gonna go with this style and so when you fit the cinch you want to take these d-rings right here and hold them to his chest and they should be approximately centered which they are because I rode him recently. Um, but if you need to make adjustments, just pop out your keeper and make the adjustments, hold it up, it's good to go. I'll step back around to the other side. You can put your stirrup up on the horn or you can throw it all the way over, either way. Um, this is how I like to store um, my cinch. Without like that it's nice and quick and easy and keeps it from dragging on the ground so you want to go through the back side of the d-ring just like that front side on the saddle back side make it nice and snug and then always grab right here and pull that a little bit to make that keeper seat all the way Extra could go up here. And I think this is called a latigo. I always forget. The cinch refers only to this part. And then I've got latigos on both sides. Oftentimes what you'd have on this side is called an off billet. It's just a, a leather piece folded over that goes down on this uh, O-ring. And then um, those two pieces get attached just like this. But uh, this is just a little more adjustable and uh, you can set it up so it's like crossfire rigging with, with the rear D-ring as well. Um, but I just ride it like this. Oh, this is whiskeys. I keep stealing these reins because I like using them on both my horses. So this is my bridle setup that I ride with whiskey. Um, it's called a side pull because there's no bit. It just puts pressure on the top of his nose and uh, has these rings on the side. So what you wanna do with your bridle is put on your left arm like so, take the reins. Um, if you're gonna remove the halter, what you'll wanna do, loosen it up. Drop it over the nose, but don't lose your horse. Go ahead, through the back, around the right back, through the loop like that. Then you can uh, bridle up your horse. But um, whiskey is still a tiny bit squirrely, and I like having the halter with me um, for a number of reasons. So I'm gonna put the halter back on. You should try not to reach like that. You should try to pull them over to you um, it's a behavioral 
thing. You want them, uh, you don't want to make a habit out of always reaching over for them or they'll always just turn away from you and make you reach. So um, a disciplined trainer would always make them uh, bend at least a, either straight or bent a little bit towards you. So when you go to put the bridle on, reins first, up over like so. I like to get them back out of the way or you can put them on the horn if they're long enough. Then you grab the top of the bridle with your right hand, slide it up over the nose like that. Make sure the chin strap goes underneath the little chin. Slide it up, right ear first, fold it forward, go back like that. Left ear, fold it flat, and over you go. You got to adjust the sweet hairdo. Adjust the brow band. So it's nice and straight. Reach underneath, grab the chin strap that goes underneath his chin. Relax everybody. You want to be able to slide your fingers through there, but you don't want it to be too loose otherwise he can just shake his head and the whole works will fall off. And that's happened to me before and it's very sketchy. All right. You know, adjust the halter just a little bit. Okay. Okay, guys, that's it for lesson one. I hope you liked it. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks. Later.